little bugger got me again. I was racing around to, I said, you know what, last minute, I said, I'm gonna go down. Amy wasn't leaving until eight o'clock to come down and do Tiger. So I said, I'm gonna go down and watch Spitfire go. I want, I want to see him go. <sighs> and he goes, I want to come. I said, no, honey, you know, I'll be back, I'll be right back. I want to come, I want, I said, okay. Threw her in the car. She's wired for sound, bouncing around. I go to pull in, I know I'm seeing it. I know that he's about to go behind the gate. I look behind me, out cold. It's 12 minutes from the house, maybe 15 from the house to here. In five minutes, she just completely zonked. It's 7.30 at night. So I, I couldn't go and get my picture taken. I talked to James very briefly uh, afterwards and uh, I made it short and sweet. Is he going to the Breeders' Crown? He said, yeah, yeah, he was really good. So um, taking our time, cleaning up his feet, working on them. You know, that's tough horse. It's not easy to do. That is not an easy thing to do. Um, to get him that good. Now, we, it was, you may have missed it because I forgot about it, but we did put him on Lasix. We qualified, I schooled him on Lasix. He was great. We did put him on Lasix tonight, and the horse was way, he said, right line in the turns. I said, I don't really want to put a head pull on him because, he, you know, he just gets running away from it in the straightaways, and that's where he'll make his mistakes. I said, you know, we haven't done any vet work on this horse for the most part since the States. You know, he never used to run in bad. I said, can he trot in 53 like that if he's tight, if he's tight and we get a little vet work done on him? Yeah. So, um, I really thought we'd be having a different conversation. I thought we'd talk about how good he raced. That was a good horse he beat. The horse that was third was third, or the horse that was second tonight was third in the Mohawk Millions. Not a long shot, but was third. Legit, decent two-year-old. So, uh, it looks like, unless something changes between now and in the next couple of weeks, Spitfire Overseas is heading to the Breeders' Crown. Now, we have to get Carter squared away. Um, I'm going to train Carter Michael Dio tomorrow. They said that he schooled and made a break and was acting up on Friday. On Friday. James didn't like how he was hung up, so I'm going to go with him tomorrow. I'm going to take him to Mohawk and train him myself tomorrow. Then we're going to get a good feel for him. I believe the Breeders' Crown, we got about two, three weeks. Now the problem will be finding a class for that guy again. That might be a problem. Uh, but he tried him 55, so he definitely can fit the numbers too. Um, there's no need to push him or bottom him out right now. He was really good tonight. I don't want to see him race anywhere for about um, 10 days. So you're getting close. Uh, nine, 10 days, we're getting close. Maybe one prep. And that's it. My goal tomorrow will be get uh, will be to work with James and work with Dominic to get Carter Michael Dio squared away. Maybe it's just been a long summer for Carter Michael Dio. He raced in the scorching hot Peter Houghton, right? Finished third. He raced in all those stake races all year. We we struggled to keep him from bleeding in the middle of summer. We had to go and enter him on the Lasex program. The, the timing of that was very frustrating. And I think the timing of that, that bleeding, that Lasex, that one day, if you guys remember back, that one day cost us a lot of money. Had he been on Lasex, James would never have stayed in with him. He would have put him back on the front. He would have won. I guarantee you he would have won that night in the Wellwood elimination. And, um, man, that, that would have changed everything, right? That that 24 hours, that Lasex program being on, that being able to get him raced on Lasex would have, I, I truly believe, would have, made a big big difference in his summer so it's funny we always talk about timing and that is one of the things that you can't change you, you can always hope for you do your best to try to try to have them ready for but when you have to throw curveballs like bleeding and mucus or sickness and lasix into the mix it makes for a very difficult summer uh, i'll be completely frank with everybody i did not i thought that spitfire overseas would race well tonight I didn't look closely at the program. I knew there was one or two decent horses in there. It's cold. It's 12 degrees Celsius right now. It's very cold right here tonight. Um, that's a good mile for that horse. James said, you know, I moved him. Then when Chris came out, I stopped him a bit. I stalked him around the turn. I moved him over and kicked the plugs. And he said there was never a doubt. He just blew right by. He's, he said he's good. And I left it on him. I said, James, not stupid. He knows what's going on. He just doesn't want to drive a long shot in the Breeders' Crown. He wants to drive a horse that can do good. And that's not to say that Carter won't come back also. 
this ain't far to come. But that was how a horse is supposed to look when he's prepping for a race at the Breeders' Crown. Very, very reminiscent of uh, Three Point Blue Chip of last year. So as Spitfire overseas, we've been waiting for that type of mile. The maturity of him as a racehorse mentally and physically over the last three, four months has been very, very good. Very good. I, I, there's a lot of adjectives bumping around in my head, but I'll stick with very good. The horse has come a long way. A long, long way to be the horse at one time. James said, it was funny because so, um, James said to me, you know, when we put him, when I put him on the gate in the qualifier and he made that break on me, he said, I was very careful because I said, you know, I warmed him up and an open bridle. I, 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 and I said, he never wore one before the schooler when I schooled him last week. You know, you'd have put an open bridle on that horse in June. He would have destroyed the place. He's matured so much. It's so hard to explain to you and quantify to you how how much he's matured. But for him to race quiet with a longer hobble, loose head check and an open bridle on, that would not have been possible in June and July. He's just a, a different horse. And that might be a very, very good thing. So a great prep race for Spitfire overseas. A little bit of a surprise for all of us to see him come out the way he did tonight. I, I, I don't want to sound too surprised because I knew he had it in him. But being off, what, two and a half, three weeks, having one schooler, changing his bridle, changing his shoes after that schooler the other day, and then having go out and race the way he did, that's impressive. So a, a great job to, with James, a great job by Dominic and everybody there. That horse looked very, very good tonight, and I'm very, very proud of what I saw uh, from Spitfire OC. So great job to everybody with that guy. We'll get Carter squared away. Is Carter going to follow him also? I don't know. That'll be up to Carter. Carter's going to have to dig down and do exactly what that guy just did. And he has the capability of doing it. Carter Michael Theo is a nice horse. So, tomorrow we're going to go with a glare who's been a problem. Uh, Carter, we're going to reassess tomorrow in his training. I'm going to go with him. We're going to make some changes with his bridle um, and see if we can't get him squared away for what could be a good final kick at the season or it could be a trip to the field. That's up to Carter. Lots more horses racing tonight. Oh my God, I'm so, I thought I was busy in Kentucky. I have been going all day long talking to people about the, the shares and talking to people about, I almost bought a racehorse today. The price was a little high, so I opted to wait. We ended up getting the horse to train uh, to, to, to see how he is, I guess. Um, so that's pretty interesting. Um, I was watching a two-year-old on on gate, a, a yearling on on gate. I'm sorry, and a two-year-old on gate, on on gate. We never get either of them. We're still marching forward. We are in build mode right now for 2023. Our foundation has been has been uh, set for Ohio. Many many horses in Lexington. Uh, we're approaching 50 babies already brought into the stable. Now it's a matter of putting them somewhere. Our horses in Ohio are getting settled in, finding the staff to take care of them properly. That's going very well, actually. Getting our horses into, into first line, to Miko, trying to move everything around. There's just so many moving parts right now. Um, but it's exciting. Everybody is pulling their weight and everybody is working their butt off. So as I said, great job to Dominic and his crew tonight. Great job by James. A lot more going on tonight. I got to drive all the way to Mohawk to watch my daughter fall asleep and drive all the way home. You know what? It's a nice night. A little chilly. It's a nice night here in Ontario. Good luck to everybody. I'll give everybody lots of updates all week. There's lots coming. Take care.